Hey guys, and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney. We gotta make this snappy, yo. I need to finish my woodshop homework, or I'm gonna fail that class, bro. And I can, man. I, I gotta get my GPA up. Anyways, back on Baker Street. See? That's why I ate grown-ups. They're not very tasty, but well, they're no good, so someone's gotta do away with them. All they do is feed you a pack of lies and take stuff away from ya. It's messed up. Oh, really, Messelstrad? Tell me, is that overcoat keeping you warm? What? Uh, oh, my, surely you were given that. Yeah, the D let me keep it. I've tried to lock daggers at him for long enough. I threatening people with weapons? Gina, I don't know if you're, you should be making fun of adults. Sure, Egbert was throwing around a stinking pistol. And the shopkeeper, actually, but like, uh... He went through the pockets and then said, Go on, then, and have it. For telling me to scarp her. Uh, okay. Always pays off giving people a look like you ate them. I beg to differ? I can't help feeling that it's going to get you into some serious trouble one day. Maybe reconsider? Nope, never will. Shut up, grown up. I'll eat you next. <laughs> I really wanted was that nice shiny disc, mind you. The music box disc? But Mr. Winnebank said it was practically worthless. I think I'm gonna go and have another bash. Give him a long, odd stare. <laughs> what? I think not, Miss Lestrade. We shan't enter Mr. Winnebank's again. Today. Why not? That's not fair! It can't be helped, I'm afraid. The police are investigating the scene now and taking a statement from Mr. Windebank. You can't disrupt them. But that disc's mine! I had the ticket of this coat and it was in the coat's pocket. So, there should be something else and all. That's what the rotten, rotten cove said, ain't it? He did mention something about another article, didn't he? I vaguely remember that. Well then, that's mine too! Whatever it is, what if it's a cobra? Or even worse, a mongoose attacking a cobra. Oh, you don't want uh, Gina. We, you don't want. You don't want that. Trust me, you don't want that. I've been there. You don't. Ain't worth it. Now she's really pushing her luck. <laughs> Miss Lestrade, I think it's time to admit defeat. You've had your haul for the day. Yeah, it's all your fault, Shones. Who even are you, stupid old man? So what are your plans now? Will you dine with us this evening? Oh, oh, oh. That would be nice. Iris would be delighted to cook, I'm sure. And I might entertain you with a modest violin recital. Well, hmm. I'll get back to you after I'm done with my staring. Well, all right then, I've considered. <laughs> no, ta. No, ta. But why don't we go get some? <laughs> why would I ever come around your place, eh? You lost your head or something? But she's gone already? Dang. Another tsundere. Oh dear, she's gone. Bummer. Having... Reviles on my quite unnecessarily, I might add. I can't help wondering. Perhaps she might turn up anyway. Interesting. Hmm. Once she had a chance to calm down, I think there's a good chance she'll decide to come. That would be nice. Very well then! I'll inform Iris to set a place for a potential guest at the dinner table this evening. And one more thing. Uh, yeah? I should be glad of your company later, too. Well, yeah, we live to get up. Uh, sorry, what? You lost me. I believe I will have a rather splendid surprise to show you. Oh, how exciting. What is it? Well, it's a surprise. You shall have to wait and see, Mrs. Sato. Until later, then. All right. Well, it seems like things have calmed down a little bit, even though poor Norahoto had a stinking blunderbuss to the face. Okay, it wasn't a blunderbuss. It was a straight up... I don't even know what you'd call that type of gun. Oh, no, it's like, where them eggs at? I'm hungry. God, we're in there all day. Ah, uh, Susie and Runo. Come in, come in. Good afternoon, Iris. How are you this fine day? Thank you so much for breakfast this morning. Mm -hmm. And don't mention it. Goodness, look at the time already. 
busy as always, I'd imagine. I'm kind of envious. I am. I'm prepping everything for dinner this evening. How does she... How does a seven-year-old genius have this much... God, her planning must be fire. O already? You've obviously cooked something special, are you? Oh, yes. After all, we have a special guest joining us. Potentially. Keep that in mind. Guess who it is. Go on. You'll never guess. Ah, Gina Lazarad. Look at those little eyes of hers shining. Oh, goodness. So adorable. Oh, dear. It is awkward when you already know the answer, isn't it? A little bit. It's Ginny. <laughs> isn't that exciting? Uh, oh, what a surprise. Yes, that's wonderful news. To see you two reunited again. Even though you, she stole from you, I... Uh, wow, I guess she just has a heart of gold. I'll slow out to under the bridge. Iris seems overjoyed at the idea. Goodness. What? What is that? Hold up. Is that a little tiny? Her lo Hold on. Editor, zoom. Zoom. Too far. Back it up. Oh, my effing gods. There. That's a... That's a Herlock Sholmes... Amamanol. I don't know what Amamanol is because my vision is pretty blurry, but... God dang, Zebra Herlock Sholmes. That's effing funny. I don't know why it's blue, though. I can't wait to learn some pickpocketing tricks from a real professional. No! Iris! Uh, yes, that sounds quite fun. Don't let her, don't let her talk to Gina about that. I'm not sure that's entirely appropriate. Are you sure, Mr. Naruhoto? Nah, come on, they're kids. Let them have their fun. Uh, by the way, Iris, what's Mr. Sholmes up to? I'm very curious. Uh, he's just staring. What? Hurley? Oh, he's been like that ever since he got back. Hello, Mr. Sholmes. Are you okay? I'm growing increasingly worried. I beg that you won't speak to me. Sorry? I don't know who you are, but kindly take your leave. As you can see, I'm not here. <laughs> what is going on with these crazy people? <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> no one is home! Be gone! I do apologize. When he gets like this, he's completely oblivious to everything and everyone and every subatomic particle in our known universe. I... Okay. Yeah, that's, you know... He's busy, I guess. Really? He behaves just like a child sometimes. Hurley does. Mr. Sholmes and Iris have something of a... Parent-child relationship, don't they? Yeah, except that Iris is clearly the parent. <laughs> I'm thinking the same thing. Come to think of it, I wonder where his real parents are. Let's never ask, because oh goodness, that's that's just. Uh, I know you're curious, but what's the matter, Bruno? You have a, such a funny look on your face. No, uh, it's nothing. I. I know what it is. I'll deduce it. Why does this girl live here with Sholmes? You're wondering, am I right? Ow, did you know? Well, <laughs> Bruno, I can read you like a book. This girl's dangerous. Goodness. London's brightest. And she's not even out of middle school yet. Wait, I don't... Wait, wait, when you go to middle school? I I'm still in what shop class. <laughs> they won't let me graduate! Don't worry. You can ask me anything. I won't mind. Well, uh, I, you know, that is basically an invitation. But, like, uh, don't you got the... I mean, the story has to progress, but I, I'm just... I'm definitely not the polite type. Like, dude, I'm like a, I'm like an ox and a stinking Sears, bruh. Is Sears still around? Whatever. F you. Not the point. The point is... I just be like, oh no, no, you you gotta go like make some eggs for Din Din, you know, just just, just fine. But about Ginny though. So by Ginny, you mean Miss Lestrade, the young woman from the Miss Gilded case two months ago? I keep thinking it was four months ago. Yes. Also stole my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Ah, uh, although after the trial, I invited her back here, and we had dinner together. And now we're the best of friends. Oh, my face hurts from smiling so much, but... 
How can you not? Ugh. What a lovely tale. Someone's so pure, goodness. Now if I bump in her on the street, she runs away as fast as she can. Is she embarrassed? What the? Why? Oh, and I chase after her in the back alleys. What the? Interesting idea of fr friendship. What? And then I let her have the latest kind of smoke grenade I've developed. Uh oh, quite quite the lovely pal you have. There's so many beautiful colors in the world. Ginny wants me to make a whole rainbow. Oh my gosh. How do they do such a good job of capturing like childhood whimsy with Iris? I don't get it. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. When I see the name Iris and pink hair, I go in a fight or flight. But this Iris? 10 out of 10. I suppose this means You've let Miss Lestrade keep the smoke grenade launcher? I guess that explains why she still had it. Yes, that's right. I got bored of it anyway. <laughs> Here, you have it. I don't care anymore. <laughs> Hurley always reacts the same way when I shoot him with it now. Oh no. That's a potential prankster side of Iris. The veneer is beginning to peel. Poor Hurley. It's hard to, it's hard to imagine him being... Like, recoiling pain. <laughs> I can't wait for Jenny to arrive. It's been too long since she last came over. I'm so excited. I just hope she actually does come over. It'd be a shame if she didn't. Well, so why are you living with Sholmes? I'm sure you've been wondering why I live with him, haven't you? Uh, maybe once or twice it's crossed my mind. Is, is he your dad? Like... My mommy and daddy aren't with me anymore. That's why I didn't want to ask this stuff. It's personal. <laughs> mommy passed away when I was born. Around the same time my father... Well, he had to go to a faraway land because of one of the cases he and Hurley were working on. What the heck? What are you talking about? Wait a minute. A, a, a long way? Is he and Hurley? Was her dad? Watson? No way! Yes. Daddy and Hurley were always solving mystery cases together. She didn't mention that before. I mean, it doesn't confirm that it was Watson, but... He wrote them all in his diaries. That's what in the metal chest over there. Really? He recorded them all? Well, I'm curious, but, you know, it's, it's a coffee table. Can't, can't get to him easily. So you mean it's true, Mr. Sholmes? It really did have a partner with whom he tackled some of his most taxing cases? Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, it's always nice to have one, isn't it? <laughs> I agree. It's true. Everyone needs their, uh, you know, their, ga their ga ga they can always count on. So Mr. Sholmes was your father? Exactly. Hurley told me I wasn't allowed to look in the chest. But that only made me want to look even more. So I opened it up. <laughs> I guess you had plenty of chances if he's just ignore oblivious to everything occasionally. And you found your father's memoirs. Yes. So I asked Hurley who wrote these. He nearly fell off his chair. And onto the viola, but <laughs> then he told me that's when I found out the author of all those accounts was my father. So Iris's dad was Mr. Sholm's partner. Dang, what the heck happened to him? Did he, did he get bit by like a speckled band? What the dumb? Was it that giant effing dog? I practically lived with Hurley all my life. I was tiny when he took me in. Still kind of tiny now, but you know. So it came as quite a shock. And Hurley told me he wasn't really my daddy. I mean. Must have been. Uh, it... <laughs> oh, that's so sad! I wonder why Mr. Sholmes chose to tell you. And at such a young age. Hurley said it's because he wouldn't have been able to hide it from me. Uh oh? Well, having lived with Hurley all these years, you might say that 
His ways have rubbed off on me. There are some things I can just see. Especially lies. I almost know when people are lying before they even open their mouths sometimes. Dang. She's good at reading people. You know what they say, like, if you blink a lot. Like, depending on, like, dude, this isn't even bullcrap, like, pseudoscience. It's, like, real. Like, depending on how often you blink and stuff, or how often you don't, like, dude, it's crazy. Pay attention to how often everyone's blinking in this room. It'll drive you mad. Anyway. I was so fascinated when I read Daddy's Diaries. That's what inspired me to write the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, actually. I always assumed Mr. Sholmes simply told you all of those thrilling stories. Oh no, Hurley's hopeless like that. <laughs> I'm still in the room! But not really. <laughs> he forgets everything. <laughs> oh my god, Iris is taking him. And he clips his toenails in the bath. It's disgusting. I know I can't be picky with roommates, but goodness. <laughs> As soon as he solved the case, it all but vanishes from his mind. I see. The other day it was so embarrassing. As usual, he totally forgot about the case he just solved. So the very next day, he gathered together all the people involved and proceeded to solve the case again. <laughs> that sounds so time consuming! What? It was quite a shock for everyone. You can say that again. Did he get details wrong? I, maybe, they, they probably were kind enough, like, no, no, Mr. Sholmes, there was no, uh, winged beast, it was actually just a, a person crashing in their airplane. You share your father's surname, don't you, Iris? That's right, Wilson. Dr. John Wilson? Oh my god, what? The guy from the, the guy from the beginning. Holy crud. So it's not Watson, it's Wilson? That's effing, that's simply bonanas. I'm sorry, that, that surprised the dump out of me. I learnt from his diaries that he's a doctor of medicine, you see. That's what prompted me to study and study and study. So I could earn a doctorate as well. Iris' father went to a distant land. Wow. Small world, huh? Jeez. I forgot how to do this voice. I'll try my best. The court will now hear the trial of Ryunosuke Naruhodo. That was close, I guess. Uh... Time to state before the- God, where did that come from? I've infested your brain. I desire a meatwire sprite. I'm just a meatwire with a sprite. But... Anyway. Kindly state before the court the name of the victim in this case. The victim's name was John H. Wilson. I'm pretty sure. Hey, I'm, I'm new to this, so... That's right. Visiting professor of medicine at Imperial Yume University. The man who in the most bizarre of circumstances lost his life in Japan. That's... Wait, what? That was like... That was like... That wasn't that long ago. Listen, am I stupid? Don't answer that. But, like, from the way she was talking, it was like, she was adopted at a very young age. That was like a year ago, right? Not even. Miss Sasato, you keep records on this sort of thing, right? Yes. Perhaps we shouldn't pursue this conversation any further. I think that would be for the best. All right, we're on agreement. Ah! And my dear fellows, how good to see you. <laughs> Iris? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sholmes, you're awake. Why ever did you not make your presence known to me before? Really? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to sneak up on you like that. Well, no matter now. So, how the devil are you? Uh well, we've been with you for most of the day, actually. In fact, pretty much since we woke up, you of all people should know. Ah, goodness, really? <laughs> Could've fooled me. How deep in the trance was he? Do you tell me, Mr. Sholmes, is your violin unscathed? 
Never? Oh, yes, my violin! Huh, whatever are you talking about, my dear madam? Never mind that now. I have something far more interesting to show you. <laughs> Behold, my dear fellows! I bet you've never seen one of these before. Another music box disc? Another? You mean... No, not another disc, Mr. Sato. This is the one Gregson demanded we hand over. As evidence. Mr. McGilded's disc. So we didn't cooperate with the police? What? Oh, my. Then! Wh what's it doing here? Huh? <laughs> you know at times, Mr. Narihodo. I think... Although I have an undeniable turn for deduction, I may well be even more adept at larceny. Th that is not something to boast about! Think of Iris, your bad influence! Oh, that'd be wonderfully exciting. I'd be your pickpocketing assistant. Oh god, she's so adorable! <laughs> she's a slippery slope! Iris! Gregson don't like y'all! You might go, well, he likes you, but you know, I gotta, gotta stay on his good side! And Runo could be our go-to lawyer if we ever get caught. <laughs> yeah, I'm not taking that case. I'm sorry. Plus, Susie has such beautiful handwriting. She could write all of our menacing crime notifications. Like calling cards and, you know, the sort. I'd be delighted. All right. So we're going to be an organized crime, are we? Okay, okay. We need a code name. Or a group name. We also need code names. Where's that deck of cards at? Anyway. I'm going to pretend this conversation never ever happened. Oh my lord. I'm a lawyer. I blah, 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 blah. Did not hear this. Did not hear this. Though it would be exciting. You gotta admit. Okay. <laughs> so, Mr. Five Fingered Discount. Why the don't? I didn't, I'm not that clever. I don't understand. How did the disc come to be in your possession? I thought Inspector Gregson took it to Scotland Yard. Quite correct. Where do you think we are, Mr. Novoro? <laughs> I just... And that sort of uncompromising attitude is precisely why I always carry some of this. C Caramel? What? Your one and only friend in times of loneliness, it would appear, if I'm not mistaken. If you will humor me, my dear fellows, cast your minds back to when the good detective confiscated the disc. Okay, yeah, there's a lot going on. Uh, I'll be taking care of whatever it is down at Scotland Yard. Thank you very much, you a-holes. So I hand it over. Uh, of course, sir. If the police demand something as evidence, my dear fellow, we have no choice but to copulate. <laughs> Just kidding. It's all yours, Inspector. Oh, my God! That's the other one! You sly devil, you! For the briefest of moments, I had the disc in my hand. Did I not? Y you certainly did, but I don't understand. <laughs> it was at precisely that moment that I summoned my one and only friend into action. I pressed the disc into a pair of bars. Like this. What? I, I was on the impression the, you know, the disc was like gigantic. I'm, I'm kind of taken aback. How big is that candy bar? Oh, it's absolutely massive. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. The disc and all the minuscule protrusions have made an image in the caramel. Indeed, this caramel is quite exceptional. Or is it caramel? Who cares? I've developed it myself, you know. Suitably soft for making impressions, but resistant to melting. The result of a precisely controlled solution. I didn't realize he was Willy Wonka on the side. What? How extraordinary. Carry a pair of these on one's person frequently proves very useful indeed. Take a house key, for example. A simple press. And its unique form is duplicated. Not so unique anymore. <laughs> I can enter anyone's property at will. And never without high sucrose nourishment. It may come in handy for our future prospects as... Pickpockets? <laughs> It sounds very illegal, actually. Uh, is this early day music piracy? From the image, oh crap, miss, sorry, sorry. From the image, I was able to create this. I confess I was most curious to know what manner music would issue from the disc when played. Okay. 
is that really gonna work though? It has to be pretty hard, Caramo, I'd imagine, to actually make a song up here. You know, like play. Do you tell us, Mr. Sholmes, what music does the disc play? Well, unfortunately, I have no idea. Do you, do you not, have you not, what, what are you talking to us for? None whatsoever. I have no ability to tell what the disc contains. But I do love a good stealing. <laughs> are you familiar with the working of a music box, my dear fellow? I, no, we didn't really get the chance today. Goodness, you don't know, Runo. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, oh. Oh, these things. Dude, when I was a little kid, these are all over my grandmama's house. And I was like, Grandmama, what is this? My grandma said, why aren't you clean it up? And I was like, uh, I want to watch Pokemon. Not important. Okay, back on topic. Inside a music box, there's a special metal piece called a comb. That's what produces the sound. Small protuberances pluck the different teeth of the comb, and they rotate past it, making the different notes. The first music box to be invented using a rotating cylinder with protuberances on it. Gotcha. Is this is this the song? What what, what is the song? It sounds kind of familiar. But over time, a new type of play was produced, which uses discs such as these. With that development, the popularity of music boxes spread far and wide, all around the globe. Apparently, not to your island, though. Interesting. Why exactly? Because the discs are easy to produce. I can be interchanged to facilitate the playing of different tunes. There are a great many firms in Europe now manufacturing music boxes as a result. Hmm. It is wonderful to be, in, be able to enjoy music, even when no performer is present. Not to mention a variety of other songs. But it is the very success of the invention that means we are now presented with an insurmountable problem. Huh? What problem? As you may imagine, the construction of one of the firm's music box do not match that of another. And we have no way of knowing in which music box this particular disc was designed to be played. There is no resolution to this problem, I'm afraid. It's quite intractable. Intractable. I see. So that's why... Mm -hmm. Naturally, I tested the disc in those few music boxes I have at my disposal. And, well, ugh, as you can hear, to no avail. Ugh. God, that made my spine tangle. The results were equally unsatisfactory in this one. So, I am presently engaged in acquiring an example of the music boxes ever made in Europe. You're getting every music box ever made? Ha! Huh? Ha! Huh? E every single one? That's early for you. Always taking things too far. <laughs> but my dear girl, an unresolved riddle is quite repugnant to my constitution. It's an investment, really. But surely all the different type types of music boxes in Europe will amount to a huge volume of music boxes. What are you going to do with them all? Well, I'll pawn them off. That's what <laughs> We're back in the poncho. That's certainly true. In the worst case, I shall have to ask you to vacate the attic room. No! What? Please reconsider. This is messed up. Don't even jo Oh. All of this over a riddle. Sholmes, you're a devil. God dang it. Anyway, McGilded. Ah, Magnus McGilded. Not a name I expected to hear again so soon. It's only been two months since that grisly case. Flashback. <laughs> what god dang heck? Why do we have this? If this thing's flammable, I don't want it in my... Get it out of here. I don't want it around. Ugh. Mr. McGill had perished within hours of the trial's conclusion. And he was there. Well, no duh. He works there, don't he? Yeah. I... Was it the curse of the Reaper? No one knows till now. The omnibus was reduced to a pile of ash. A shred of evidence remained. The man's death. The truth about the murder in which he was so intimately involved was buried. Dude, we never truly avenged that guy. I don't remember the name, Frig, you know. 
The guy that made all the hats. You know what's up. Even though we successfully established Mr. McGilded's innocence in the trial, the newspapers are still claiming that it remains an unsolved case. Dang, we didn't, we he didn't even get credit. Bummer. The murder of the brickmaker. Mr. Thrice fired Mason. I was completely wrong. He does not make hats whatsoever. Son of a gun. That was the other dude. You know, yeah, that guy. That guy! Not the other guy. I play these real games. I don't know what's up. In the end, the truth of the matter remains a mystery. So I have no idea what really happened that night. Mm. Although Mr. McGilda was found not guilty through my defense, I still don't know if that was the right judgment or not. I mean, I hope we could find out one day. Maybe one day soon. It would appear the case is not yet closed. So if you don't mind me, I need to f phone a couple people to purchase some <laughs> music boxes. Well, it's time to get things ready for dinner, I think. Jenny will be here before long. Come on now. Scoot out the kitchen. Thank you, Iris. I'll leave you to it. Oh, well, you must let me help then. Mm-hmm. Of course, Susie. There's plenty to do. <laughs> I just can't. I know. I've said it like a million times. It's just, it's just so adorable. Like, she's just the most adorable, like, most pre If anything bad ever happens to Iris, I will hate these games. Real talk. Oh, no, Hurley. Bruno, I've been found guilty for larceny. I don't know what to do. It wasn't me, though. <laughs> I would tear up. I can't let that happen. Oh, God. I think I shall investigate the condition of my faithful performing partner. Now, then, where did I leave it? Must be a lesson you, Mr. Sholmes. Never leave... Anything too precious with the pawnbroker? <laughs> no, that's simply just not the London way! I can't ever think of that. Uh, yes, but you may be right. Uh, oh, that reminds me of something Mr. Windermink said before. He said that he had a manuscript of Iris's in pawn. Didn't he? Uh, did he? No. He definitely did mention that. Mr. Solmes... Latest tale of otherworldly mysteries lies dormant in my storeroom, were his exact words, I believe. Hmm. <laughs> so you heard about it, did you? I expect you were as in incensed as I was. Yes, the idea of such a wonderful story being languished, Mr. Windebank's storeroom gathering dust. It's terrible. Oh, my dear madam, I'm quite sure I told you already. The Bondbroker's storeroom is the safest place for it. More secure than a bank vault, that's for sure. Really? They need to reinforce those sewers, goodness. Mm -hmm. And what about your Stradivarius, Hurley? Was that safe and secure? Well, uh, uh, the, there may be the occasional mix-up. Because <laughs> by a certain impromptu someone not too far from me now. Do you have any idea how long it took me to write that Bakersville story, Hurley? Come now. It sounds so exciting. The Hound of the Bakervilles. Or Baskervilles. I would love to read it. <gasps> what? What happened? My Sholmes look kind of mad. <sighs> did, did I do something bad? What the dump? What? Well, I didn't do this. It's auto. Is Asato staring at me? Uh, 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 huh? What is going on? Homie, where's the theme music? Pop, pop that disc in. What are we doing? What does it feel like an icy chill just swept through the room? Are we not supposed to talk about the, the hound? Susie, what did you just say? Mm. You said the hound of the Baskervilles. But how could you know the full title? <gasps> Did she look in there when no one was looking? Oh my goodness! Well, that's, um... This is so unbecoming of Sasato. I can't believe it. What? That's because Miss Sasato is such a great fan of all the stories of Mr. Sholmes, of course. <laughs> oh boy. But Runo, the Hound of the Baskervilles, has never been published. Oh, I see. Well, um... When I showed Hurley the manuscript, he told me that I wasn't allowed to publish it yet. I-I-I don't understand. What 
How? What? That's why you said that he'd keep it safe. Until it was the right time for the story to be made public, you see. So that's why the manuscript is at the window banks. And yet... How could Susie here know its title? Well, Hurley, what's going on? Uh, well, this is a headache, isn't it? Ah! But, what, what, what is it, Mr. Solmes? It would appear our guest has arrived. Oh, thank God. Hey, Gina! What's up? Hello, Miss Lestrade. I'm sorry I, like, profiled you yesterday. Uh, today. Actually, both times. That wasn't yesterday, though. Oh, goodness. This was a bad idea. I knew I weren't welcome. I I'm going. No, no! Block the door! Don't let her! Wait, Miss Lestrade! <laughs> Imagine Naruto just planks in front of the, <laughs> the exit. I forbid it! We... All been eagerly awaiting your arrival. Really? But the eggs may take a little while. Just I hope you're not too famished. <laughs> Haven't we, Iris? Iris about to cry? Oh my goodness. Sasato! No one likes a spoiler! Come on! Oh yes, just wait here, Ginny. We'll have everything ready in a jiffy! Come along, Susie. Or else. <laughs> Uh, right, of course. <laughs> it's a pleasure to see you here, Miss Lestrade. Please make yourself at home. <laughs> Don't stand in the doorway, my dear girl. Come along in. Would you like to hear one of the tunes of this music box? Not that one. No, no, not that disc. What say you to some Mendelssohn? I won't take no for an answer. Here it comes. Mendelssohn it is then? What? Uh... She's so scared. These blokes are mad, they are. <laughs> Kitty! Yeah! The gang's are here. I just missed not not me, ain't, but that's okay. That's how it should be found. <laughs> that evening, Iris prepared us all a full meal that was even more delicious than usual. Mr. Sholm's violin performance was in no way meddlesome. That's good! And Gina, as we came to call her, taught us all how to steal things from one another without being noticed. I pretended not to listen. Even though I enjoyed themselves, everyone thoroughly enjoyed themselves in the night. Naruhoto would appreciate that, like, hmm, yeah, I could use this in a case to prove a point one day. Goodness. What a fun evening. Just legit, nothing bad happened. Gina came at the perfect time to kind of erase that awkwardness. But legit, Sasato doing that? That's like, that's like unheard of. Crazy. Girl, you wild. I know you don't look it, but girl, you wild. That was a very enjoyable evening, wasn't it, Sasato? Yes. Iris' cooking was truly divine. I feel as though I can still hear the enchanting strains of Mr. Sholm's violin even now. Best of all, I bet I could steal the glasses from his lordship's face next time we're in court. Don't. Nah, let's not practice. Some things, you know... Only do it if you have to, which I don't know why you'd ever have to, but... Naruhoto san could I consult you about something, I wonder? What's the matter, Sasato-san? It's about the telegram I received. Uh, what, uh... Oh yeah, first in the morning. I completely forgot. What is it? I've... been summoned. What? Where? What do you mean? The telegram... It's in the Lord Chief Justice's office. Lord Strongheart asked me to see me. Okay, not back home. Oh, thank goodness. The Lord Chief Justice? When? Tomorrow morning. Th then we have to start preparing at once! Oh no. That won't be necessary, Naruto. What do you mean? Also, I didn't realize we had a cane. Oh, wait, that's a shovel over there. I've been summoned alone. Huh? What for? I have no idea. I suppose I shall find out tomorrow. Well, so can I go with you? Like, I guess I wasn't summoned as well. Man, now I'm nervous. What's this all about? Whatever it is, I'm making, it's making me feel very uneasy. Let's try and keep a cool face for Sasato. Oh, uh, who could that be? Oh, thank goodness. Good evening, friends. How are we doing tonight? Hello again, Iris. Music and all. Oh, 
Hello, Gina. She doesn't seem too happy <laughs> for some reason. What? And Gina, too. Hello. Yes. Gina is going to stay with us tonight. She's going to sleep in with me. Isn't that right, Ginny? <laughs> well, yeah, but... How lovely. Let me make a pot of tea. It's a slumber party that I never got to experience. Well, you know, I've learned so much today that you're a rotten thief. <laughs> she said that. Oh, my God. Iris would never. On what in particular? All those things Ginny showed us. Wasn't it wonderful? I mean, all those pickpocketing techniques. We'd have fun trying them out on each other, didn't we? Mm-hmm. I think I've awakened a natural talent. I could earn a living from it. No, become a doctor instead. What? Hey! You might be getting ahead of yourself a little there. Also, what? What brings you to our humble quarters at this late of hour? Well, you see, I came to return this. Oh, what? Oh, you took it from me? What? That's mine! However, did you? I told you, didn't I? <laughs> I have a natural talent for it. Yeah, great. I completely forgotten. Iris literally is a child genius. Dump. Gosh, she learns fast. Anyway, here, you can have it back. Not that I really understand why you wear it, though. Thank you. It's complicated. All right, then. Good night. G good night, Iris and Gina. Hmm. Uh, what? So this is your office, is it? What do you think, Ginny? I think I wouldn't fancy me chances with a lawyer that lives in a place like this. What the? Me too. <laughs> what the? Hey, that's so mean. Yo. F y'all. Y'all bunch of bullies. Mean girl, London edition. God dang. It seems as though Iris here still has something she'd like to talk about. What? Just completely deflected it. I suppose she probably wants to talk about the manuscript. I suppose she does. Goodness. Okay, it's the kind of happy music. Well, I almost feel bad on Susato's behalf, but like, I didn't tell her to do it. Shoot. Iris, I... I suppose you're hoping to talk about the manuscript, are you? Hmm. Aren't you going to tell me? I'm so sorry. I need a little more time. Please. Huh? What the dump? Alright, I understand. I hope I haven't made you feel awkward. No, not at all, Iris. Not at all. I don't know what all this is about, really, but... It's a story you made up, in it, Iris? That mantle script is whatever you call it. It's not exactly a story that I made up. Something I read in Daddy's diaries. Daddies, huh? That's right. I don't suppose I mentioned it to you before, Jenny. But my daddy was Hurley's assistant once. His partner. Uh, 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 oh. They solved all sorts of strange and mysterious cases together. Is that right, mister? Y yeah, apparently so. I was as surprised as you were, though. Or I wasn't as surprised as you were. <laughs> Daddy wrote all the details, every single case down, you see, in his diaries. So I study them and write my own stories based on what actually happened. So those, this whole time were the... Dang. Those were the opening things. Those were the diaries. Holy dump. Then the speckled band was just... My mind is blown, bro. What the heck? That's not even trying to be a twist, but it's a twist. Ah. Oh. So your old man, where's your old man now, then? I can't handle that sprite. Look at those eyes. I can't. He had to go away on urgent business to a faraway land, and he'll be gone a very long time. So I've never really met him. R right think of it. I don't know anything about Gina's parents either. Perhaps we should ask her. 
no, 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 no. I can't handle any more, bro. I cannot. I can't. <laughs> it's just sad. <laughs> I Iris, this, <laughs> I don't know what that sound was. The Hound of the Baskervilles, sorry. I take it that it's another tale inspired by your father's accounts. Mm-hmm. That's right. I thought it was fascinating. But it's different somehow. From the other cases, I mean. Uh, what do you mean? I don't really know. But it must be special in some way. So after I'd written it and showed the manuscript to Hurley, he turned as white as a sheet. It was the first I've ever seen him like that. What the heck happened? I'm curious. It pains me to have to say this after you've toiled over this for so long, Iris. But this story must not be published at this time. Under any circumstances. But why not? It's one of my best works. <sighs> I'm not at liberty to say. Not now, so please do not ask me. This, this stinks. What's going on? What, what is Miss, what is Sholmes hiding, bruh? Alright then, I, I won't. But I do solemnly swear that I will explain everything one day, Iris. Just when the time is right. Dang. I guess even a guy like him has secrets he has to keep. What the dump? And that's how the manuscript came to be with Mr. Winterbank, isn't it? Yes. At least said it had to be somewhere very safe. D that really gets my goat, that does. It's treating you like a child. It's mean, that's what it is, keeping secrets like that. But what if he has a good reason to? I'm sure Mr. Sholmes isn't trying to be mean. He's actually a pretty great guy. And I'm now just realizing that. <laughs> if you said he wasn't at liberty to talk about it, I'm sure there must have been a very good reason. I think so too. Dang. Hopefully Iris can forgive poor old Susato. You lot are too trusting for your own good. He's literally an adult. Can't pull the world with my eyes. <laughs> Shams is lying to Iris. I bet my life on it. What? That, you, you, you know nothing, Gina. Oh my God! Why would you? Are these lying to me? No, he's not lying. <laughs> Gina, apologize right now. What is? What is her deal? Oh my God! Also, what am I supposed to do? I, I can't. Oh, she's over there. That figures. Hello, Zuma. What's up? So, yeah, uh, I feel bad doing these in order, but let's do Shom's life first. Gina, what do you mean when you said you know Mr. Sholmes is lying to Iris? Well, he reckons he popped the manus mantle script or whatever, right? But come on, that's obviously a load of rubbish. Uh, my, what, what would you think that, Gina? It's simple, really. That story is really an old Mr. Winderbank's storeroom. There's no way someone would half or around around the world, in other words. You, you can know about it. No, but, like, we, well, oh, gosh, she's misunderstood. Oh, God, like, the life is, like, fading from Sasato's eyes. Oh, good heavens. My errors. I'll never steal again, I promise. She didn't steal, she just peeked. Sorry, Iris, but you asked me, he sold it. What of a tell, we vote telling you. But Hurley would never do something like that. I'm sure of it. Grown-ups do a lot worse than that, believe me. Bareface liars, a lot of them. Do you happen to have any examples? Maybe a Mr. Gilded? I don't know, I'm just spitting. You ain't just realized it yet. All them adults be scum of the earth. Oh, is that how it is? No. Oh my god! This is like... This is just night and day, man. You can't blame Gina for even thinking this way, though. But we know Sholmes. He ain't got a bad bone in his body. I'm telling ya, that mantle script ain't at Windebanks. You'd see soon if you had a look. Even if you think you can trust him, I don't. That Sholmes is a liar like the rest of them. You 
I've said this multiple times, but... If I'm honest, I've wondered if Hurley's telling me the truth sometimes. I mean, that's natural, but see? Uh, oh, but I don't mean that I think he sold it. I mean, that I sometimes wonder if he might have hidden my manuscript somewhere. Somewhere I don't know. Even though it's wrong of me to doubt him. Don't be too hard on yourself, Iris. Man, this episode is a bummer, bro. This is sad at the music. Stop it! Play this one instead. Nah, too cool. Totally ruined the mood. Back to the sad music it is. I just don't want to see these characters bummed out, man. I know my time with them hasn't been long, but like, man, I'm so attached. Ugh. I don't know, is like the Reaper gonna go up to not sue me? I hope that don't happen. Ugh! I've realized that I don't know anything about your parents, Gina. Or really yourself, actually. Uh, I ain't got any, have I? Never did have them. Well, oh, that's not how that works, but... Uh-oh. Look, the East End's full of orphans like me. No one wants nothing to do with us. The minute we're born, not even our moms. <laughs> I kind of figured, but... Uh... But we all stick together. The older ones look after the little ones. And make sure they get by. So that's why you're a pickpocket? Hmm. Nah. Dive into my life, I love it. I get kicked out of every time I left some pompous idiot's purse. Okay, I guess I was just too hopeful to think she was a pure of heart. Even if you are a thief, you know. Should be modern day Robin Hood. And that's how we afford to eat. I'm like Robin Hood, eh? What? That's how I see it. I promise you, I did not look at the text on the screen. I keep doing this. No, duh, Johnny. What else would you compare yourself to? Yeah, right. I do think about it sometimes. What it be like to our parents, I mean? Always thought it'd make everything all right. I haven't listened to what Iris just said. Sounds like having parents ain't always easy either. Uh oh. Hmm. I mean, if you know you never had them, you don't feel like you're always wanting to meet them, right? It's true. I do want to see Daddy so much. <laughs> oh my god, I actually gotta keep it together. I did not think. Where is this coming from, man? Poor Iris, bro. God dang it. Well, that was a tearjerker. Oh my goodness. Look at the time. Come along, Ginny. We should go back downstairs. Yeah, all right. And please, don't mention any of this to Hurley, will you? No, of course not. Uh, you have my honor, even though I am an adult. Good night then, Iris. And good night, Gina. You must let me make breakfast for you tomorrow morning. I insist. But don't you have to get summoned tomorrow? What? Oh, yes, please. I can't wait, Susie. Good night, everyone. There they go. Iris. That sure is easy to forget, isn't it? Sometimes she speaks just like an adult. But deep down, she's still just a child. Man. Okay, so now I get it. He... Wilson, he did have to go to Japan to teach, I assume. But leaving his daughter behind, that's so sad. You don't get to see her grow up. And then he gets killed and he can never go back. God, dude, I don't know. Like, man, homie had to have a good reason to go to Japan, bruh. I'm obviously not this fictional character in this video game, but man, I, I want to miss, like... Hopefully I want to miss... My child's like childhood for the world, bruh. Maybe he was like educating like, you know, people in another country. Like sometimes can't be selfish. I don't know, man. This episode is just such a bummer. I don't know. How could anyone watch this, man? Well, I think it's time that I turned in for the night. Naruto san. Yeah, gotta get up early. Back at it tomorrow. 
Dr. John H. Wilson, Iris's father, but also the name of the murderer visit uh, name of the murdered visiting professor at Yume University. It can't be a mere coincidence. There's something deeper going on. Is that is that the truth or just Naruto thinking everything's connected because he's a lawyer? Man, I'm just so Master Naruhodo. Mr. Naruhodo. That voice. That's Mr. Sholmes. Hey, what up, man? Huh? Make me I mean, look at me up in the middle of the night, bro. What you want? What's going on? It's Miss Lestrade. She's gone. What? G Gina? What is she was supposed to be sleeping in Iris' room, but her bed is empty. She, she, well, she's an independent young woman. She probably decided to go home, no? Hmm. I think not. I was speaking to her before she retired. Received the distinct impression that she was looking forward to breakfast with Mr. Sato. No, I don't believe the girl's gone home. I've been waiting for over an hour now. Uh, uh, oh, if you'll indulge me, look out the window, my dear fellow. What? What's going on? What's this about? Uh, dude, I'm so scared. Wait, the the lights on? Wait a minute. Why is there a light on the? Oh no, the cameras. What the dump? That's Mr. Windebank's pawn brokery. You're. What's going on? Oh no, the manuscript. Oh, come on, Gina. No, come on. It's simple. If the store was really in old Windebank's storeroom, there's no way someone out around the world, in other words, you, could know about it. God, dang it, no, Gina, you're gonna get caught. You just can't see from Palm Brokery. They're gonna get you. Could Gina have gone? It seems you have some knowledge of the situation, Mr. Naruto. I, yeah, sorry I do. I mean, not really. I, I didn't put her up to it. Well, anyway, we must investigate. At once! Right. M M Mr. Sato, what the? Okay, we're going. No, oh, please, Gina, don't do anything silly. Oh my god, Gina, please! The door to window banks, it's open. And the lamp is burning. Must be Gina. Oh my god. Let us hope it's nothing more sinister. What? What What do you mean? Come. It's not a moment to lose. There's least something is afoot inside. Please, please be okay. Please. There's no one here. Oh, yes. There is. Uh? What the? <laughs> 